Thank you for choosing Access On Demand. Access believes in continuing education, and we create content to empower you to learn and grow anytime, anywhere. Let's get started. Hello, thanks for joining our question and answer session for clinicians on the latest Access Home Health and Access Care software uh, and app updates. Access leads the industry with a complete suite of easy to use, innovative software empowering home health, home care, and hospice organizations to grow their business while improving patient care. My name is Cully and I'm on the marketing team and will be today's moderator. Our speaker today is Shannon Bailey. Shannon also goes by Shelly. She is the Access Care product mark manager um, and helping ensure features of Access Home Health and Access Care meet expectations and solve problems for our clients. Prior to joining Access in 2016, Shelly worked in a pulmonary ICU for Parkland Hospital in Dallas, Texas for two years before transitioning to home health, where she amassed more than two decades of home health nursing experience, and she has a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing from Texas Women's University. We will have a second training session on Sunday, June 27th, open to all clinicians. Please feel free to share and register for this second session if you have any additional questions at that time. For our agenda on the next slide, you'll see we'll kick off with quick reviews of the newest mobile updates before our question and answer portion. Your phones have been muted, but you may submit questions through the chat that I will review and ask our expert. If you have added follow-up questions, please raise your hand and I can unmute you and you may need to unmute on your end as well, but you can then ask them over the line. At the end of the webinar, I will share some additional support and resources that are available to all clients. And the webinar recording will also be available in a follow-up email to all who registered. And these slides are currently in the handouts section of GoToWebinar. On um, uh, starting out, we're gonna go with Access Home Health, and that is actually currently available in the Apple App Store and Google Play. So if you see um, on our next slide, that it's a state-of-the-art mobile app that allows clinicians to document at the point of care with or without an internet connection. And there are a number of new mobile features, including a load previous notes option that allows clinicians with granted permissions to view the most recent visit notes, many COVID-19 updates, an updated wound manager that is available on Android and coming soon to iOS, and the ability to document supervisory visits. On the following slide, you'll see that Access Care is also available on all devices, has added these new features. Access Care is a mobile app that has now become available nationwide for nurses, and physical therapy is available in select states, but will be expanded to all states later this year. This unique staffing solution allows home health organizations to connect with qualified clinicians to fill open visits. This enables clinicians to pick up extra visits and earn more. The other newest features of mention for Access Care are the ability to document emergency preparedness information and to view a list of organizations that clinicians can contact before applying to visits if they have clarifying questions about the opportunities. From streamlining OASIS documentation to added tasks on the patient chart and more, Access is constantly enhancing our mobile apps. You'll see this list on the following page. If you, um, on the next slide, if you regularly use the Access mobile apps, please leave us a review on the App Store or Google Play. Your feedback is meaningful to helping us improve our products. And many of these features have been requests from clients. Um, also be on the lookout for more details for our access certification program. You'll see an image of that on our following slide. This comprehensive training will be available for clinical, operational, and financial tracks across our home health, home care, and hospice solutions. We are excited to offer this to clinicians very soon. To see a video walkthrough of these new features and hear more about the upcoming features, please watch Shelly's new video. You'll see the thumbnail on the following slide, and that's titled Training, New Mobile App Innovations for Home Health Clinicians. Additionally, you can visit the Access Help Center and look under Software Updates for more information. Some helpful links will be added in the chat shortly. Um, now, let's begin our Q&A with Shelly. Welcome, Shelly. Thank you, Kali. It's so fun to be here and get to have this conversation. Everybody on the call just know that this is a very informal time together and we want to hear your questions and your feedback. I will try to answer all the questions um, that I can for you and those questions that we don't get to, we'll follow up with you after 
this time together. So do we have any questions to start out with? Shelly, I actually have a question here. Um, so I wanted to start out by asking you, what's the purpose of star ratings in Access Care? How are those used and who sees them? That is a great question, Cully. And um, the star ratings really serve the organization and the clinicians. And so when a clinician performs a visit for that organization, um, that organization gets to rate that clinician. And that is um, pertaining to just that visit. So anytime there is a visit performed, um, there is a contract between that organization and that clinician. So then when the clinician finishes that or completes that visit, that organization rates that clinician on timeliness of documentation, thoroughness of documentation, how much the patient um, really enjoyed your visit. So there's a star rating. If the star rating is three or less, then the organization is required to give a comment on why that um, clinician rated a three or less. Four or more, four or five stars is a great star rating, so they don't are not required to leave comments there. That being said, the clinician also is able to um, give a star rating and review for that experience with that organization. Were the supplies in the home? Did they communicate well? Did you have what you needed? Were they responsive when you called with issues? Um, that is your opportunity to review that organization for all the other clinicians that want to work with that organization. So they have a star rating as well. Um, your star ratings will show to the organization when you apply for a visit. They'll be able to see your star ratings. And if you're a four or five star um, clinician, they're going to want to see you again. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think that's a really great feature to be able to kind of keep track of how you're doing and get some real-time feedback, I'm sure. Um, do you want to show us in the app kind of how that looks and where clinicians can see that information? I would love to. Let me get there. Okay, so on the app, your... Um, clinician profile, if you don't use the Access Care app, I'm going to explain a little bit more about that later, but on the Access Care app under the three-line menu, you go to your profile, and on the first page of the profile is where your star ratings land. So this is the star rating that this, you can see Credence has given, I have done several visits for Credence Home Health Services, and they have given me a five-star rating. Um, in the beginning, um, before they knew me um, very well, they would leave comments. Um, and I have, um, even there's a, a two-star rating for me, um, even though they said I completed the document accurately, there were some things that we needed to resolve, I guess I don't really remember that. but. Your star ratings are average, so I'm still a five-star nurse. Some nurses get upset when they have less than a five-star, but don't be upset about that. Just learn from that like I did. Um, your, your star ratings will average. Also, another concern with the star ratings are that you need to build up an average star rating. So just be patient. We do talk to our organizations and really try to convince them to um, talk to them about trying the new nurses on the app um, so even before they have a star rating so don't be concerned about that your star ratings will come they do help you when you do have a star rating but um, but if you don't yet have star ratings don't be concerned but you'll build those up yeah i think um the star ratings is a great way for organizations to evaluate clinicians in addition to everything else in their hr documents um shelly what do you recommend or some things that clinicians make sure are filled out on their profile? What can they do to better market themselves on the app? Oh, great question. Let me show you. On the app, when you're filling out your clinician profile, there are opportunities for you to, um, to, to market yourself, I guess, um, for lack of a better word. 
um, as you go through your profile, you're going to have the opportunity to add your certifications. So this is a credentials page where you'll add your license and your license number. We verify your license every month. Um, we run a, a license verification just to make sure nothing has happened. You do have to have an active valid um, professional license to use the app and to see the visits. But on this page, you'll see that we have add a certification. This is a great way to advertise what your skill set is. So you can see that we have CCRN, WOCN, um, ACLS, um, coding in OASIS. Um, we, if you are have any of those certifications, please load them because that really speaks um, to your uh, expertise and your skill level. We also have the opportunity to add another type of certification. And this can be um, whatever you have in a certification. So I work with an organization who does a lot of infusions and they would like for me to load my IV certification. So you add your date there and then you take a picture of your certification. This is going to be interesting because I didn't don't have a cute thing to take a picture of. And then you save that and that sits in your certifications when they view your application. I can show you that in a little bit. They'll see all of these items labeled um, to view on your, um, when you apply for the visit. Another that's a, great. And that's oh, an sorry, addition. Oh, one, more, one more thing. Okay. <laughs> the bio page is also an opportunity currently to add your story or your the something your philosophy of home health what you specialize in what you'd really like to do in home health um, this is another great way to just share yourself share your story that one's not a required field but i think um, there's certainly some clinicians that take advantage of that yes. um, and, and, and put i'm glad you said required one. field coley because i didn't mention that the cpr is required and we validate that on the expiration date so if gotcha. your cpr card is expired you will not be able to apply for a visit and that's just a safety net for you because you'll get the alert and for the organization and this is all in addition to the skills attest attestation that we already have in the app um, where you can kind of indicate what skill level you have for different types of nursing care correct Yes, let me show that too. Thank you, Kelly, for, for bringing that up. In here, we have the skills assessment, and that is your self-attestation to your level of independence with each skill. And so to see a visit with this type of skill, you have to be at a level four. Um, if you're at a level three uh, or below, you will not be able to apply for that visit with that, with that particular skill. So it's really important to keep that up to date because you know if if you've added new skills um then you want to be able to be matched to those visits and the the app will only show things that you are um, advanced in right um yes. and i do i do have a question here shelly from teresa, Hi, teresa. Um, it's an ac access care question she's asking about how we get more information uh, about the organizations that are that are posting the the opportunities. So, what an organization is a joint commission organization? How does the organization use this service in regards to verifying license comp competencies, etc., with each clinician? So, I think you answered part of that with us. We do a lot of the license verification, OIG checks, etc., background checks um, already for organizations. But how do how do clinicians see more information about the posting organizations? Well, the, the posting organizations, um, what we share on the visit is their um, phone number and their um, organization name. So for any uh, information, actually this is just a new feature that we added to the posted visit um, that you can call from the visit. So, um, we, we allow you to easily call from that posted visit. 
And you can also view a list of organizations in your local area. That's one of the newest features, if you want to show that, Shelly. I do. Thank <laughs> you. Sorry, I'm flipping yeah. through, and my phone is moving a little bit slow. Well, Shelly's doing that. Some of um, part of that is that if there's a visit that you have questions on, maybe about the patient or um, anything, you can message the organization before you apply. Um, and that's also a newly added feature for Access Care. So it's a that's a great way to kind of um, network with other organizations in your area, but also serve more patients. So thank you, Kelly. So what Kelly was referring to was the organizations list on your three line menu, the organizations. This is a list of the organizations that are in your area in a 50 mile radius from you. Um, you have the opportunity to favorite these. And you can see their star rating from this list. And if you find one that you really like to work for, you can favorite that and have all of your favorites in one easy list. And on here, um, you have their um, contact person and phone number, and you can message or call from this, from this list. So Teresa, I think um, if you have specific questions about that organization, I think the best thing right now at this time is to message them and go ahead and ask if you wanted to ask if they're joint commission, um, et cetera. And uh, I know a lot of that information is publicly available, but that's an interesting thought. Maybe that's something our team would want to display for clinicians in the future. So I do love that idea. Consider. I do love that idea to, sh to display their accreditation. And while we're on that, just know that the organizations, um, you know, we we offer access care to um, for nursing across the nation. So there are state specific regulation, um, accreditation agency specific regulation that the organization has to comply with. So they may ask you for another document. So I um, see patients for an organization who needed, who um, is ACHC um, accredited. They need my driver's license and my auto insurance um, in my mobile HR file so that they have access to it. And I was able to upload that uh, in that same area where we, um, where we added our credentials. So under that other menu, I was able to add my driver's license and oh my phone, there it is. I was able to add my driver's license and my auto insurance. The same way that um, I added that IV certification. So they have they, you know, they certainly can ask you for that specific documentation. Um, and that is the perfect place to upload those um, accrediting agency specific needs. Awesome. Well, I, and I, you know, going off that question, I have another question here. Um, how do I see if I got assigned a visit I applied for on Access Care or not? Oh, that is a great question. And whenever you are in the app from your home page, you'll have the applied visits page. You can see that right in the middle of the page. Oh. Um, on this applied visits page, when I have visits that I have applied for, if they have been assigned, um, you will see a visit field indicator. So any visits that you have applied for and have not yet been assigned will land on that page. I apologize for not having that set up for you to see that because that is a really great feature. And when I do, sorry. And when, when there's a visit that is assigned to me, what's that process? What does that look like? Well, when there is a visit assigned to you, you'll get a purple banner. Oh, interesting. Okay, so uh, Teresa was actually asking from the organizational standpoint, how 
How do I get information needed um, for those clinicians who make complete visits for our patients? Um, and then another question from her is, how do you complete supervisory visits with the clinicians? Is there a user guide for access care or training for the agencies for use of access care? So there's a, there's a few different questions there. Um, I think when you get on the software side, Shelly, we can have you show what the organizations see in, on a clinician profile, what kinds of things they can look at in terms of how they get the uh, you know, CPR licenses information that would be helpful to start with. Yes, I think that would be a good idea. I'm still seeing the slides there, so if we can share. Coming up. Okay, so um, when you're um, using Access Care as an organization, it always starts in home health. We, we currently offer um, home health visits in Access Care, soon to come for home care and hospice, but currently we are home health. And whenever you need, have a patient that needs to be posted to Access Care, let's see, can I get rid of this? You'll see the little post to access care icon here, and I will post this visit. And this is how the organization selects the task that tells you what you're supposed to do during the visit. So we have a long list of skills here, um, and we feel like we cover most things. So let's just say this visit is gonna involve some trait care. And then uh, more visits, uh, more visit details, that will be seen to the app, will be visible to the applicant or here in the visit details um, box. Um, so say uh, supplies are in the home, just so you know that um, you don't have to come by the office. Visit must be completed by 11 a.m. That's good information to know, right? And then if there are any, if there are details that are um, protected information, they'll go in this box to be visible to you after you have applied. So let, the organization will confirm that posting. And what was the difference there with internal visits? That was an option on that screen, correct, Shelly? The internal visits, thank you, Coley. Um, the, when you check that uh, box for internal posting, that means that visit is only going to be visible to the organization's staff that has downloaded the Access Care app. So um, if you don't work for that organization, you won't see that visit either. We have, we have many, many filtering um, features. Okay. And we also have a bulk posting feature, but, you know, that's, that's a separate um, screen. And that was, that's not part of the, that updated screen. So then whenever you go to the posted visits, then you can see that that visit is, is, that I just posted is here. I have the information here in the details and then I apply for the visit. And then that goes to the organization. And back on the um, software screen. Okay, thank you. And then I'm going to switch to Access Care. And you can see that this visit is uh, has one applicant, the Grant Augusta for 521 Trade Care. Shelly, I'm not seeing your, oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. I can see your software screen now. Doing some magic over here. You can see that Grant Augusta, Skilled Nurse Visit for Trade Care, has one applicant. So I, as the organization, I'm gonna view this applicant. So this is what the organization sees uh, about you when you um, apply for the visit. I have worked for this patient with this patient before. My COVID-19 screening has been done and I screened low. I've been an RN for 28 years. I'm a five-star nurse. If I wanna look at more details, I'm gonna go look at, uh, open that application up, the profile up. And I can see the background screening has been done. We do your OIG checks monthly. 
We verify your license monthly, like I said. And then here is that space where we have the certifications. This is where they see all of your skills and receive those documents that they can request from you, like the driver's license or the auto insurance. Um, we also have your original terms of service here um, and those other required documents that uh, regulation requires. Your COVID-19 screen, uh, screening history is here and then your tax documents and we'll talk about tax documents here in a little bit. Um, and then they can see your skills competency um, here. And then your phone number is here for them to call you directly if they have questions for you, if they need to have a conversation with you. So I, I think I'm just going to go ahead and hire Shannon or uh, uh, offer Shannon this visit. So I go to assign. I have already um, have an established credit card and I agree to the terms of service. Remember that I said that each visit ha is, has its own contract between the clinician comes independently as a contractor to the organization there's a contract for that one specific visit so I as an organization agree to my part of the contract and whenever you um, accept the visit you're agreeing to your contract okay so let me go back and show you what it looks like <clears throat> Now you can see that the purple banner showed up um, on the app and you'll get this purple banner whenever you have an, uh, an offer. You'll also get a push notification when you have an offer um, that when you're not on the app. So you'll still get that message um, wherever you are and at any time it's assigned for you. Now the visit countdown is for three hours on if you schedule or apply for a visit that was uh, on the date um, of the visit. So the scheduled date of the visit. So if it's before that, you'll get the purple banner and it will persist until the scheduled date of the visit. So you just tap on that purple banner and it'll bring up the visiting question. You still have the opportunity to accept or decline this visit. And I'm gonna accept that visit. And then you'll see that it lands in my schedule for the day. So I have a question from Charlotte um, in the chat and she's asking, is this for therapists or just nurses? Um, Charlotte, I think you're referring to Access Care. I'm not sure if you're referring to the webinar, but webinar is for everyone. Um, happy to answer your questions. Go ahead and submit those in the chat. But Access Care is available in um, all states for nurses currently. Therapists, we have a list of 16 organizations. I can share that link. Um, I believe we have a link in the help center with the original 16 states, but it's going to be coming soon this year for therapists in all states. If that Absolutely. Is. We will offer therapy, PT, OT, and ST across the United States uh, by the end of the year for sure. And I think uh, Christopher Grill just submitted one. On the liability side, do clinicians carry malpractice insurance or do they contract with the agency to be covered? They come as an independent contractor. It's recommended that you have your own malpractice insurance. Okay, perfect. And Teresa, just going back to your um, your last question, I think we didn't answer the second half there. Um, how do you complete a supervisory visit with clinicians? Oh. That's, I think she's asking from the agency side, um, but we can also show it in the app because that is a new feature for Access Home Health and Access Care. Um, to complete the documentation for a supervisory visit. Let me show you that while we're here. In a skilled nurse visit now, um, you have the opportunity to um, provide a supervisory visit straight from the visit. It does not have to, from the patient visit, does not have to, ooh, does not have to be um, posted separately or paid for separately, you can um, have that in the app. You can do that from the app. Oh, it looks like we're gonna have an issue. Let me go to the Home Health Mobile app. And just know that what we build in Home Health Mobile 
we put into Access Care and vice versa. Access Care has a layer of um, a layer for the independent contractor, and the payment is different for the Access Care independent contractor. Um, there we go. But we try, we, our effort, um, we really want to be um, mobile first. We want you to be able to do everything that you can do on the web on the mobile device. We're working really hard to make that happen. You'll see more and more things come out um, for our mobile devices so that you will not even need to go to the web to finish your documentation. Now, Shelly, is that going to include um, advanced care plans? What are some <laughs> yeah. of the what are some of the the newer features that are kind of planned for this year um, to help clinicians complete their documentation in the Oasis on mobile? Okay. I, yes, I will talk about that, Tully. The one of the features that we have just um, offered is the supervisory visit, which was part of this big package. So you can go to the supplemental documents and open a supervisory visit from here. You can choose your LVN, home health aid, PTA, or um, certified occupational therapy assistant. Therefore, you do not get out of compliance, especially with the home health aids. You know they have to be supervised every 14 days. And it's very easy to open a supervisory visit from your visit note, complete that, and be in compliance. You can do it several times a week if you want to. So I won't go through that um, just for time's sake. Um, let's talk about what we have coming. So um, our uh, plan is for you to be able to document an OASIS fully on the mobile app. And that means for to be compliant with the COPs for Medicare, you have to, um, address advanced care plan. You have to be able to um, document your emergency preparedness. And then we're given the option for, we will have the um, OASIS audit and the OASIS scrubber um, available. And then you'll be able to sign and complete and submit your document from your mobile device. We're very excited about that. And that will be in the next few months that you'll be able to complete that. Teresa had also asked about training, um, user guide for access care uh, for agencies. I, Teresa, I'd recommend go to the Access Help Center um, staffing, and there, it, there are a number of videos and walkthroughs there, but um, I'm going to share some support resources. There was links I sent at the beginning of the webinar that are in the, it should be viewable in your chat right now, but also at the end of this webinar, I'll, sh I'll share some of those resources and you should be able to get the answers that you need. And if, if anything else, you can always call us. We have a number of market specialists on the Access Care team willing to, to help demo and walk you through if you're just starting out on Access Care. Um, and then I have a question here from Andrea. Um, Andrea, I think I might need more clarification on your question. I, if you would like to talk, I can unmute you. But Andrea was asking if there was a software sandbox that we can practice um, and learn the different features without accepting an actual visit. Uh, and Shelly, do you want to speak to that? I, Andrea, let me um, see if I can unmute you if you are available to chat. I've just unmuted you. Hi, Andrea. Shelly, if you want to try and take a... Take a uh, stab at that, how to yeah. practice and learn the um, software. If, Andrea, do you use the home health software? I don't know if Andrea's, I've unmuted her, but I don't see, I don't know if she's not able to actually chat. Okay. Well, so there, the only difference between documenting on the, on the Access Care app and the home health mobile app, once you get to visit, it's all the same. Um, so if you're using Access software, you know how to document on the visit and there's not really, um, there's, I wouldn't think you would need that training, but what you do um, wanna look at and um, is just go in and download the app and fill in your 
and fill in your profile. So there are a lot of different, um, there are different pages of the profile that um, need to be completed before you can accept a visit anyway. I don't know if I'm answering your question really, but just know that the Home Health mobile app and the Access Care app, the visit notes are exactly the same. There's no difference. Access Care just gives you the platform to connect with organizations um, and um, pick up extra visits here and there as an independent contractor. So we just, we allow you to connect. We allow you to carry your um, mobile HR packet to a bunch of different organizations without having to go fill out applications um, all over town, really. Yeah, and I see Andrea's written that um, her company is in transition to Access. So actually, I think uh, another great way to practice with Access here, it seems like, is what you're asking about, um, is to post internal visits. That's exactly what Shelly just did. She, We have a testing agency. You can post an internal visit then see um, on the mobile app how that looks uh, from, a, from a clinician's side and see how it looks on the um, agency's side and you can apply to it. And then um, you'll see again, kind of what it'll see, what it'll look like on the agency's side. So that's probably like the best way to practice. But again, we have a number of resources in um, our help center. You can always post questions in our user community and um, call us if, if there's still additional questions. Good answer, Colleen. Let me just check in our chat as to what other questions we have here. Um, and Shelly, I do have a question here for you. How do I um, document COVID-19 vaccine information for a patient? Well, currently, um, but it is in the works for the mobile app. Currently, you, I need my phone. Currently, the um, COVID-19 vaccines are not available I need this one, um, on the mobile app, but they are in, we are in progress with that right now. Um, so you'll be able to see what I'm about to show you on the web. And, and uh, while you're doing that, I also just wanted, I was just thinking, Andrea, the other thing to, to do is reach out to your um, implementation specialists if you still have questions. I'm sure your organization, when they're transitioning access, has someone um, assigned to your organization. You can still reach out to that person, even if you've completed your implementation, they can surely answer your questions. So that's another option. We also have um, a new report that is, is that planned or is that now coming out soon, Shelly, for tracking uh, COVID-19 vaccines for patients as well? Uh, I think it was it was just released. Okay, let me so, go to this. So if you're a clinical manager, um, you can also pull a new report to to track that. I think the probably the easiest way to do it is an innovation profile. All right, so add new immunization and your types of immunization. You can see that now we have the single dose, first dose, second dose um, options here in the immunization log. And very soon to come to mobile. Do you go. want to go ahead and show them that report since you have this open? I think that would be good to, to show in case we have any clinical managers on. Um, let me get there. Reports, report center. Um, do you remember where it sits? Sorry. Um, it's hard for me to see in the screen. I know that they have some vaccine ones. Let me see. You know, uh, mm, mm, mm. I'd have to double check just to. 
Yeah, I think we're going to, uh, I wonder if it didn't, it was supposed to be released um, on Wednesday. I think it so might be released be next upcoming. next week because I'm not seeing it on the recent yeah, list. No, it should be in the clinical reports, actually. So yeah. I think that must be coming out next week. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, that's, that's okay. I think that's something else to look forward to that's going to be coming out very soon. So what other questions do people have? I'm not seeing too much more in the chat. And we're getting close to closing time here. Yeah. Just double checking that I didn't miss anyone or no one's hands up. <laughs> I did want to talk about tax documents a little bit while we have some time and while you're looking, um, Kali. Tax sure. documents for um, access care users. When you come as an independent contractor and you um, earn $600 or more, then the um, organization is going to need to produce a 1099 for you to fulfill your tax obligations and for them to fulfill their tax obligations. They don't pay any taxes, but they have to report that to the IRS what they paid you. Um, and so let me show you on, uh, I showed you on the web where they add that. Um, yeah, so it was on the um, clinician profile from the organization side. From the organization, from the dashboard. Are they able to see that now? From the dashboard, um, they will see your uploaded document. And here in your profile um, is where you see, I'm oh, sorry. I'm getting click happy again. <laughs> is where we offer you um, the a link to the W-9 that you can um, print and then fill out and then upload from here. And then you'll see your tax documents that organizations have uploaded for you. We'll just go to this test agency. You'll see your document here that you can um, email or um, print for yourself. So anytime you have $600 or more for one agency in one year, you'll um, receive a 1099. And when you're onboarding, You'll upload that W-9, just do it from the beginning, and um, um, it's required now, so just know that you'll need to get that done to, to be able to use Access Care. So that's what I wanted to show you on the app. How so did the, uh, and, and how did the payments work for clinicians on the Access Care app? Just a quick high-level overview. Oh yeah, I would love to tell you about that. So when you apply for a visit, you saw that the organization has a credit card um, set up with um, Access Care. So when the when the visit is assigned to you, that visit payment is pulled from that credit card and set into an escrow account with a third party partner. Um, so it never goes through Access. Um, it leaves the organization, is held in escrow, and then when the document is completed, that means it's been QA'd, then that, that those funds are released to your account. We do recommend that you have an account dedicated to your access care visits. It's not required, you can use your regular checking account. I have a dedicated account because it makes it easier for me to watch my payments, for me to see you know, the money that I've made on access care and to reconcile at the end of the year for my taxes. And Shelly, how much time do clinicians have to complete their documentation um, and how fast do they get paid? Okay, good question. So ideally, and we all know that our documentation is supposed to be finished at the end of the visit. We're in home care um, for years, we've gotten in some bad habits, but you are required, you have five days to turn in your, your OASIS for the organization to be um, in compliance. Um, but we have um, a seven day limit. If your documentation is more than seven days late, then um, we, will, um, we will give you a gentle suspension and not let you apply for any more visits. 
but um, if you turn in your um, documents um, and they sit in QA for five days without being addressed, you're going to automatically get paid. So we protect you from, from waiting on the organization. We also give a little courtesy to the organization um, so that they're not waiting on our, on our documentation um, for more than seven days. So um, it's a platform that really works for organizations and for clinicians to be safe and compliant. But it is fun getting that, uh, seeing that money just drop into my account um, and seeing that account without even thinking about, about having to go pick up a paycheck or anything. It's automatically there and it seems to add up pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, now there's no limit to the number of visits you can apply for and accept. I think uh, maybe if some of you have been with Access Care a little bit longer than originally was, uh, a limit of eight visits, I think, a day. Mm -hmm. And now you can you can earn as much as you want. Again, see as many patients as you feel like you can fit into your schedule. It allows a lot of convenience and flexibility. Well, I don't see any other new questions in the chat, and I think we're getting close to time, so I'm going to just wrap it up if we want to pull up our slides there, um, and I will share some of those resources I mentioned. Shelly, thank you so much for sharing your expertise and wisdom with us. You did a great job. Thank you, Kali. You're a, you're a great moderator. For further questions, um, please do search our help center. It's at access.com forward slash help. The Access user community is a great place to connect with others, share ideas, tips, feedback, and industry best practices. And for live support, contact our team at 866-795-5990. We would also appreciate, appreciate your feedback on today's webinar. Please complete our short survey that will show on your screen in just a moment. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining our on-demand training today. Access is the only home health care technology company approved by the American Nurses Credentialing Center to offer continuing education credits and the most recommended home health software on software advice. You can watch more on-demand training videos through our industry-leading help center or at access.com where you'll find tutorials, blogs, white papers, and answers to frequently asked questions. Access. Empowering care anytime, anywhere.